The Only Alien on the Planet, 1995, a young adult novel by American author Kristen D. Randall, follows New Girl in School Ginny Christensen as she tries to connect with Michael Smitty Tibbs, a handsome and academically talented boy who never speaks and is known to his classmates as the alien. With Smitty's longtime friend and protector, Calder, Ginny manages to break through the alien's emotionless facade, uncovering his traumatic experience of abuse at the hands of his brother Russell. The Only Alien on the Planet was a 1995 American Library Association best book for young adults. High schooler Ginny Christensen is going through a period of upheaval. Her older brother, Paul, is her best friend, but he's going to college. At the same time, Ginny's family is moving across the country, and Ginny is starting her senior year at a new school. Back in her old school, Ginny was almost popular, but it is harder to be the new kid. Feeling like an isolated outsider, Ginny encounters Smitty, a boy who never speaks even when spoken to never makes eye contact and never allows anyone to touch him. His face is expressionless but handsome, and despite never speaking in class, he has become an honor student. A girl in Ginny's class, Hallie, explains that everyone calls Smitty the alien. Soon afterward, Ginny meets her neighbor, Calder, a likable boy who has made himself less than popular by standing up for Smitty whenever anyone teases or bullies him. Ginny instantly likes Calder, and they become friends, but when he suggests that Ginny meet the alien she is reluctant. Eventually, she agrees to go to Smitty for math tutoring. Smitty proves adept at communicating without speaking. Ginny finds a poem written and then destroyed by Smitty, signed Michael. Smitty points out to her that he always signs his own writing Michael, and Ginny understands that he regards Smitty as a persona, created for him by others. As she observes how complicated and painful it is for Smitty to communicate, she sees her own relationships in a new light, appreciating their effortlessness. Ginny learns that under his effectless shell, Smitty is a kind and sensitive young man. She doesn't understand why he insists on being silent, Calder can't explain it either, although he knows it dates to an early childhood accident. Calder wants Ginny to help him draw Smitty out of his shell. Ginny is reluctant, she doesn't know how, and she is slightly afraid of what they might uncover. However, in the end, she agrees, and she and Calder decide to open their campaign by taking Smitty to a series of old movie evenings. Smitty accepts their invitation to the first feature, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. The film contains scenes of violence and abuse, and Smitty walks out. Naturally, he won't say why, and so Ginny and Calder try again, inviting him to the next feature, East of Eden. This movie is about a painful rivalry between two brothers, and again Smitty walks out, even more upset than last time. Ginny and Calder invite Smitty to a party, unsurprisingly he is uncomfortable. At the party, frustrated at her inability to draw Smitty out, Ginny kisses Smitty before he can stop her. Distraught, Smitty breaks down. He is admitted to a mental health clinic. Ginny and Calder visit him, encouraging him to cooperate with his wise and kindly therapist. In therapy, it emerges that Smitty's childhood accident was nothing of the kind. Instead, it was nearly fatal abuse by his older brother, Russell, who swore to kill him if he ever revealed what Russell had done. Years of subtle and manipulative abuse followed, hidden from everyone except the two brothers. Slowly, Smitty begins to face his demons and communicate with his friends. Ginny and Calder struggle with Smitty's revelations. As she learns the truth about Russell's abuse and the neglect of Smitty's parents, Ginny comes to value her own supportive and loving family. She also becomes increasingly angry with Smitty's. With the support of Ginny, Calder, and his therapist, Smitty finally confronts Russell and reveals the truth to his parents. Smitty begins to find healing, and the book ends with the suggestion that he and Ginny might have a romantic relationship in their future. The Only Alien on the Planet explores the consequences of childhood abuse, the value of friendship, and the difficulty of honest communication in young people's lives. The novel was largely well received, Kirkus Reviews called it a strong book with healing at the end, memorable for its spirited friendships and unpreachy soul searching. However, some reviewers noted that Smitty was, at best, an unlikely victim of childhood abuse, a very romantic figure, but not one likely to be found in the real world. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.